So hello everyone, my name is uh, Amin Athmani. Uh, I'm a PhD student at University of Technology of Troyes in France. And today I'm gonna present to you my work, which is uh, a consensus programming model to solve a parallel machine scheduling problem with release dates and setup times uh, constraints. So I will uh, start with an introduction and then I will define this problem. I will expose the, uh, propo the proposed CP model and uh, the tests and results on that model. So scheduling is uh, one of the most studied uh, problems in uh, combinatorial optimization, and especially because of its uh, impact on industrial uh, revolution and uh, the supply chain. There are a lot of types of uh, scheduling problems. One of the most known is uh, parallel machine scheduling, where we have uh, a set of machines that can do the same thing uh, in parallel. We can find this configuration in many industries like textile, uh, semiconductors, or chemical industries, and etc. So in these uh, configurations, we have uh, many uh, constraints that we can consider, including which we can find setup times, uh, release dates, and due dates, and uh, also many objectives uh, that we want to minimize or maximize. So in our problem, which is uh, uh, the notation is RMREXJKCMAX using Graham notation. It's an unrelated parallel machine scheduling problem. So we have M unrelated parallel machines. M related, that means that each machine has its own speed. So the and N jobs, uh, the, the jobs have uh, what's called release dates. It's the time by which the job is available to be scheduled. A processing time and the setup time between uh, each pair of jobs. So the setup time here is machine and sequence dependent, which means that if we change the machine, it changes. And if we change the order of the jobs, it also changes. The objective function in here is uh, one of the most classical ones. It's uh, the make span, which is the latest completion time uh, on the M machines. So the problem can be represented uh, by these matrices. We have here the processing times and release dates. And for each machine, we can have uh, a setup time matrix. So in this instance, for example, we have five jobs and two machines. The solution can be represented with a Gantt diagram. So we have uh, here the solution. Uh, so in uh, in pink, we have the job, the processing times, and uh, sorry, the setup times, and in blue, we have the processing times. Here, for job three, for example, it cannot be started before its release dates uh, are three. So this problem hasn't been uh, studied in the literature before. So uh, one variant of the problem has been studied, which is uh, RMS. SIJK CMAX, which is uh, the problem without the release date. So we added the release date uh, constraints. To do so, so we took the existing benchmark generated by Fanjul Pairway All, which consists of uh, 1,620 instances. Uh, we have a different number of jobs going from 10 to 1,000, so very large instances, and number of machines uh, ranging from two to eight machines. So what we did is we took the same benchmark, the same instances, and we added the release date according to an existing protocol in the literature, which takes uh, the mean of, uh, of the processing times and uh, a release date factor and generates this release date according to the processing times. So this table summarizes this new benchmark comprising uh, 1,620 instances going from small, medium, and large sets. So we have three sets and uh, different release date uh, factors in order to study the effect of uh, this new uh, added constraint. So the first model we are going to propose is the CP model. So uh, it's a consent programming model based on the interval var decision variables. So we have multiple uh, interval variables representing the tasks. Uh, 
For example, we have EG, which represents the job over all the machines. And then we have three variables for each job at each machine. So we have X, X, I, J representing job J on machine I. Uh, T, I, J representing the processing part. So we separated the processing part and the setup time part because the setup time is uh, uh, dependent on the, on the sequence and on the machine. Uh, we also have a sequence variable for events inside one machine. And we also have a Camel function uh, that will add a useful cut for our model. So the model is the, the following. We want to minimize the, the Cmax, which is the maximum the, uh, completion time of the machines. Uh, we have EJ, which is an interval var uh, with optional flag equal to false. So it's not an optional interval var. And you have the user's uh, Camel function, which counts the number of jobs uh, scheduled at a time t. So we have the job inside each machine represented in here. We have xij, which represents the whole job. The ij, which is the processing part. So the size is p, p i j. And sij, which represents the processing time. So here we don't fix the size because it can change from uh, one configuration to another. And we impose the release date over the setup time. So here we link these variables together. So we have xij, which is spanning over uh, the processing and setup parts. Uh, we have the end at start constraint, which uh, puts uh, the, both parts back to back. And we impose that they are either both present together or absent together. So the sequence variable will impose a no overlap over the mesh, over the uh, over the, the jobs that one machine handles. And in order to choose uh, the machine for one job, we add the alternative constraints uh, between EJ and all the XIJs that represents uh, one uh, one job. One important constraint is the setup time. So the setup time will change according to what comes before. Uh, the job and what comes after. So that's why we added this constraint uh, that, that gets the type of the previous uh, job. And according to that, it would get the, the right setup time from the setup time matrix. And the useful cut is that the command function can never exceed the number of machines in uh, our system, because at most we will have M tasks running uh, at time T. So this graph will uh, uh, summarize the, the model. We have here the alternative constraint over all uh, the, the tasks. And one task inside a machine is represented by its setup time and its processing time. And we have this sequence variable that represents each machine. So we tested this model using uh, IBM CPLEX uh, CP optimizer. It's the latest uh, library uh, version. Uh, we didn't do any parameter tuning, but there is one parameter that we changed to zero, which is the relative optimality tolerance, because it was equal to 10 minus four. And we have some really large values for the Cmax. So uh, we fix it to zero in order to get the right uh, optimality flag uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this part. And we took the small, medium, and large uh, instances. So we took the same protocol as uh, Fanjul and Peru for the, for, the, for the other problem. So one hour for the both small and medium instances, and three hours for uh, the large ones. The metrics that we considered are uh, the RPD and the gap. So the gap is the gap deviation between the lower bound and the uh, the return by the solver and the objective value. So the results on uh, the small set, we have uh, a very promising result. So with over 88% uh, of optimality ratio over all uh, the whole benchmark, especially for smaller instances. Uh, so we solved uh, 
564 instances out of the 60, uh, 640 to optimality with a very good runtime and also a good gap for the instances where we didn't prove optimality. What we notice is that when the n over m ratio goes bigger, the model tends to perform better. So for the medium instances, uh, it's a different uh, nature of, of instances because we change the, the, the ranges for the setup times. So we notice that the, the CP is struggling to prove optimality and very large, uh, relatively large values for the gaps. Uh, and this suggests that we need to develop uh, tighter bounds for the model in order to help it uh, prune better. For the large instances, which is uh, really surprising, that we prove in 53% uh, of the optimality. And for very large instances of 1,000 jobs and eight machines, we have up to 63, 65% uh, of uh, optimality. Uh, and we're also satisfying results for in terms of the gap. And the same uh, remark is uh, still holding for the N over M ratio. So here, 425 instances uh, were solved. So as a conclusion, we propose an efficient method to solve uh, our problem, even for bigger instances. Uh, so this model solves over 61% of the benchmark, which will be a ground truth for future works in order to compare methods. So we have the, uh, the optimal values for each of these methods. Uh, so these, all of these results are available in our website, uh, scheduling.cc, uh, with the, the, bench, the generated benchmark also. Uh, our perspective is to propose a Bender decomposition that will, uh, will take a MIP model with a CP model, a hybrid Bender's decomposition, um, developing tighter bounds to help the model perform better and also conduct a similar study with different objectives and adding more constraints to, to this parallel machine configuration. Thank you very much. And if you have more questions, um, you can ask me. How different is your model from the one without the RI? So the difference is that uh, is that we have these constraints over here. So in the the model without the RI, we could use just uh, a distant matrix, and it's implemented in CP optimizer. But the difference here is that when we do that, uh, the RI interval, the idle time for the RI is overlapping with the setup time. So we cannot use that with, uh, with this uh, modeling. So that's why we added all of these variables in order to separate the setup time and the processing part and impose the RO on the setup time part. That way we satisfy both the release date and the setup time. And here the setup time is uh, changing according to this uh, constraint, according to what comes before our uh, current job. Any other questions? Thank you very much.